What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. Today's scenario isn't even weird because it's something that almost happened in the series. If you remember from the ending of the 23rd World Tournament, which, let's be honest, I know a lot of people skipped it, but you're missing out. Anyways, at the end of that tournament, Kami did offer Goku the position of Guardian. Obviously he turned it down, but what if he didn't? What if Goku actually did become Kami? As in, the Guardian of Earth, because Kami's also a title, not just his name. And that's what we'll be exploring today. If there's enough interest, I'll continue this into a full series, so let's put a like goal on screen. But with all that out of the way, let's begin discussing what might have happened if Goku became Earth's Guardian. Obviously, our story begins after the 23rd World Tournament. Kami offers Goku the position of Guardian, and he accepts it this time. He isn't really too fond of it, but he does think that it might be a good idea for him because he'll have the opportunity to train under gods, which Kami also tells him about too. He wants to make it as enticing as possible, but he knows it's going to be hard. It's also worth noting Goku's going to accept it reluctantly. He didn't want it in the first place, so here Kami's going to have to push Goku to do it. So, they make some arrangements. Kami tells Goku he can live his normal life, and Kami will help him transition into being Guardian. And it'll be over the course of a few years so Goku can get adjusted to it, and he can see why it's so great. Or rather, why he's such a good fit for it. And really, he kind of has to bribe Goku with training. He's already trained under Kami and knew that he grew really strong in that way, but there's other gods above him too, apparently. So, Kami's gonna have to try and pull some strings. But this really does excite Goku, learning that there's people even above Kami who he thought was the greatest teacher of all. Kami doesn't know the true extent of who's above him, but he at least can probably get some access to King Kai, which is a good start. Which also means Goku's gonna have a late start actually becoming Guardian, because while Kami doesn't want him to watch over Earth, he did promise Goku this, so he's gonna let him do that first. And it's probably gonna take a while too, because knowing Goku, he's gonna be training as much as he can up there. And as Kami thinks about it, it's not that big of a deal. What's a couple decades of Goku training if it means he's gonna keep Earth in good hands for centuries beyond that? Although, as far as Kami knows, Goku's a human so he might not actually live that long. Most humans don't even live past a century in general. And that's kind of a concern for him because how is he gonna be Guardian of Earth if he's gonna die in like 80 years or so, probably even less? So, they're gonna need to prolong his life some way. Definitely not through the Dragon Balls, but there are other methods. There's actually one perfect person out there that could help Goku extend his life even further. Goku honestly doesn't care too much about living that long either, but hey, if it's part of the role, he guesses he has to do it, and also, it's more years of training for him, so that might be fun. Maybe they could just do what Roshi does, and that's exactly what Kami was thinking. They make a visit to Kami House, and Roshi's surprised to see both of them here, especially after what they ask. So, he tells them about the herb that he uses to actually extend his life even longer. He has to eat this periodically, but this keeps him from dying of old age, and it might even let them retain their current age. Goku's obviously up for the quest, especially because it's a fun little side project for him. And it's not too hard. He's able to get the herb for himself, and now with this, he's going to be able to prolong his life even further. As long as he eats this regularly, it's going to keep him youthful, and it's going to make it so that he won't age that quick. And he won't die from old age either. Although, it's not just for him. It's going to be for Chi-Chi too, because with her as Goku's wife, she's going to be the goddess of Earth. She's also living up on the lookout. Honestly, she didn't really know what to think of this position, but hey, it's a job for Goku. Granted, it's not a paying one, but I mean, they're living as gods. That's at least some sort of success, and they're going to be living a happy life up here, so that's all that really matters to her. And she actually likes this idea too, because it means they're going to remain young forever. Kami even takes the herb for himself and tries to make it more potent somehow. He's not sure if he can, but he's going to work on it, because he needs Goku to be alive for as long as possible, obviously. They can't have a guardian dying a few decades later. So, Earth has a new god and goddess in training. But they're going to be in training for a while, because now Goku actually leaves to go meet King Kai. It's going to be a little bit weird for him, because first of all, he has to pass Snake Way. And that's going to take a while, especially since he can't really fly that well yet. He can, but it's going to be very draining to do. Kami actually does train him up a bit for a few months because this is a really rigorous task. And Goku doesn't realize the scale of it until he's actually there. But Goku equips himself with a Senzu Bean, and that should make the trip a bit easier because that'll keep him full for the entire time. Which is exactly why he trained a few months beforehand, because if he didn't do this, the trip would be a lot longer and one Senzu Bean wouldn't cut it. By this point with all his training, Goku's actually close to the level he was at in the Saiyan Saga. This also might mean Gohan's born a bit later, but he still is going to be born. It's just that Goku's been training so frequently that they don't really have the time to look after a kid. Although he is going to be born pretty soon, like maybe a few months later than normal. Thankfully, Kami and Popo make for good nannies. And obviously, Chi Chi's there too. Also, Ox King joins them on the lookout as an honorary guest. It's a nice, happy family up there, at least when Goku's around. Because at a certain point, he actually does make it to King Kai's planet. And when he meets King Kai, King Kai's actually a bit confused. He thought he had a human coming here, and Goku says, Yeah, he is a human. Didn't he hear about this from Kami? Well, Kami told him that he's training a new guardian, which he assumed would be human, but there's a Saiyan here now. Goku has no clue what he's talking about, and King Kai realizes. Goku doesn't know that he's a Saiyan, does he? So the first thing Goku does on this planet is hearing a lecture about how he's a Saiyan. With King Kai telling him about the Saiyans and how Goku might have gotten there in the first place. This is obviously a huge shocker because Goku didn't realize that he was an alien. Well, that probably explains a lot, especially with how strong he is. And according to King Kai, these Saiyans sound like very bad people. Although, they seem to be all gone by now, except for a few. 
He's one of the last survivors and he's really different for a Saiyan. And this is the only Saiyan on Earth that they know of. But Goku tells King Kai he's expecting a kid soon. Does that mean his kid's gonna be part Saiyan? This kinda worries King Kai. Another Saiyan on Earth? This Goku guy seems nice, but he doesn't know about another one being born. Hopefully they're not innately evil like that. But it seems like with the right people raising them, the Saiyans can be good people, so hopefully that kid is the same. And this should be interesting. With Goku being a Saiyan, he's gonna be much more resilient than a normal human, which he especially needs for this training. But he does find it kinda ridiculous that they didn't know Goku was a Saiyan. That would be like Kami not knowing he's a Namekian. Wait, Kami's a what? King Kai can see they have a lot to learn. These Guardians know very little compared to him, so he's gonna take Goku under his wing to make sure he's a good fit. Not only is he gonna train him in terms of his physical and mental strength, but he's also gonna teach him some things. Over this time frame, Gohan is eventually born, although it's really strange because he's being raised on the lookout and his parents are both gods. And him being born on the lookout is actually a really good thing because with Kami and Popo there, they actually act as tutors in a way. In terms of education, he's gonna get a great education up here because Popo is actually very smart. This means both Goku and Chi-Chi get to have what they want. Gohan actually starts training up here a bit, but also he's getting the education that he needs. Actually a better education than he could have gotten on Earth. He has an incredibly exclusive and incredibly smart private tutor up here. They don't spend their entire time on the lookout though because Chi-Chi obviously realizes they need to be on the surface at some times. And Kami's truly starting to see what he's gotten into. Goku's not even really there that much, and Chi-Chi and Gohan, they leave the lookout a bunch. He could tell Earth will still be in good hands with his new Guardian, but they seem to be taking this very lightly. And another reason they actually did start training Gohan is because Kami eventually did hear from King Kai about the fact that there's a couple aliens up here, including himself. Also, including Gohan. Which explains why he was born with a tail and why Goku was able to transform into an ape as a kid in the first place. Just in case, Kami removes Gohan's tail. As Goku continuously trains with King Kai, he learns of the higher gods too. King Kai's not the only one. He's actually one of four Kaio. He's the North Kai. But there's also a higher tier of gods above him too that he rarely even sees. This excites Goku even more because that means maybe he could find some higher gods one day and train with them too. He's already grown way more powerful with King Kai so far and has learned a bunch of different things beyond just strength. And Goku's way far beyond where he should be by now. Eventually we get to the point where the reunion at Kame House is supposed to happen. By now Goku's come back down to Earth a few times and he hasn't been with King Kai the entire time but he has gone back and forth. Crossing Snake Way now isn't really as hard as it was before, especially because he could fly pretty well and he's way faster than before too. Before a trip across Snake Way would have taken up to two weeks for him. It only takes him about an hour and he's getting faster every day, which means he can really go back and forth whenever he needs. But for now he is on Earth because he's gonna go meet his friends at Kame House. He hasn't really seen them in a while, besides Roshi who he briefly saw with Kami. Chi Chi, Gohan, and Ox can go along too because they've been up on the lookout a lot. It's nice to see more people down on the surface, especially because it's been so long. When they arrive, they're pretty surprised to see what Goku's been up to. Not only does he have a kid now, but apparently he's God. At one point, Kami did even put him in a different type of gi, but Goku preferred his old turtle school one, so he's still wearing that same orange that he does. But there are times where he wears a white one that's more similar to what Kami has. He looks the exact same as before, but Krillin can immediately tell that his best friend is way different. In terms of personality, he's still the same person, but he's definitely learned a lot more and has grown a lot more too. They're honestly pretty impressed. Also, they learn about the fact that Goku's an alien, as well as Gohan probably. Which is perfect timing because around the same time, another alien actually lands on Earth, and it's Goku's brother Raditz. His encounter with Piccolo goes like normal, but then he eventually detects a really strong power at Kame House. Goku's suppressed right now, but still, even when suppressed, Raditz sees that there's a power level of 500 over there, which is absurd, but he's not getting the full picture. Raditz shows up at Kame House, and it's a lot more level-headed here because Goku already knows he's a Saiyan, but didn't realize he had a brother. And since Goku knows he has control of the situation, he tells Raditz they should take this off the island because it looks like it's about to go into a fight. And if they want to settle this, they're just going to have a battle somewhere else. Raditz doesn't even attempt to take Gohan either because he doesn't see a tail on him. And they make sure he doesn't find out about Goku's relationship to Chi-Chi or Gohan. Although, Chi-Chi could even fend him off on her own. But Goku goes by himself for the time being, just to make sure no one else gets hurt. He doesn't know what this guy is capable of, and clearly he's a threat. Definitely not someone that Goku wants to join forces with. After all, he is Guardian of Earth, and this is an evil threat coming to Earth. Kami even communicates with Goku in his head. He needs to expel this evil from Earth. If Raditz truly is that big of a threat, don't hesitate to kill him. In terms of when and when not to kill people, Kami has been a lot more decisive in that regard. He even wanted Piccolo to die in the 23rd World Tournament, even if that meant that he was going to die too. Plus, with all these years of experience as a Guardian, he has the experience to know when he should make this decision. Goku's still not sure yet, but he'll keep that in mind. Raditz starts the battle with Goku, and he can't do anything against him. Raditz doesn't get this though. Goku's only at a power level of 500. He checks the scouter, and his power's raised. It's actually up to like 3,000 now? That makes no sense. It was 500 before he was sure of it. There's no way his younger brother's that much stronger than him. He should be weaker than Raditz. As the fight continues, Goku's just effortlessly blocking all of Raditz' attacks, parrying them and dodging them. Goku tells Raditz no matter what, he's not going to join him. He'll give him a chance to leave Earth, but just stop this. He's not going to win here. But Raditz has one final trump card. 
He generates a ball of energy in his hand, throwing it up in the sky. Goku has no clue of what's going on, but Raditz starts transforming, turning into a great ape. Goku honestly didn't really expect that. He didn't know there was a way for him to transform in the middle of the day. He already learned that he was the one who became a great ape, and the one who killed Grandpa Gohan, and he knows how dangerous the great apes are. Which means that Raditz is probably really serious about this. He's here to kill Goku and possibly everyone around them. But Goku's not too concerned. Raditz even mentions that Goku's power is not that high. But Goku's holding a little bit more away, and he has the perfect way to counter this. While with King Kai, he's learned a ton of things, and it wasn't just gravity training that helped him. Raditz was at a power level of about 1500, so in Great Ape, that would be 15,000. In base, we're gonna say that Goku's about 20,000, and I feel like that's actually pretty conservative. And the reason for that is because he wasn't as focused on strength here, and he was also going back and forth between King Kai's planet and Kami's lookout. It's not like he was there constantly over these past few years. But also while he was there, he wasn't just doing pure training in terms of getting stronger, he was also learning different techniques too, including one that he's actually gonna try out against Raditz here. Of course, with his base strength, he can't actually beat Raditz. But just as a test, he tries to go into Kaioken times 2, which he could do pretty effortlessly right now. He can even push up Kaioken to times 20, and at that point it's straining him, but he can go up to times 4 without any effort at all. If Raditz can't believe what's going on, Goku's beating him, and he doesn't even really use Kaioken that much, basically just to dog walk Raditz. And Goku has learned by now that the tail is the key to them becoming great apes, because that's why Kami took off his tail in the first place, and it's what King Kai told him too. So, he aims for that, cutting off Raditz's tail, stopping him from causing any more damage. Raditz is on the ground defeated. Goku says he'll give him one more chance to leave here. He might be related by blood, but he's not Goku's brother. He wouldn't expect his brother to be such a cruel person. And out of anger, Raditz charges a blast at his hand, telling him this entire planet will go alongside them. He's not going to lose here just like that. He drives his hand into the ground, about to launch a blast right to the Earth's core. He doesn't know if this will even destroy the planet in general. It's probably a bluff. He doesn't have enough strength right now to do that. Really, only in Great Ape he could have done so. But before he can even do anything, Goku stops him, with Raditz saying he'll kill everyone here. All his friends on that island, even that kid, he'll go find them, kill them next. Maybe that will convince Kakarot to join them. And it's clear that nothing is going to make Raditz stop here. So, much to his disappointment, Goku ends up killing Raditz. Especially with Kami telling him to do so. But before he dies, Raditz tells Goku that the other Saiyans will come to avenge him. There's two others out there, and they're far stronger than he is. They didn't actually hear the Dragon Balls here either, but they know that Kakarot actually seems pretty powerful. How did he beat Great Ape Raditz without transforming? That would mean his power might be just under Vegeta's level. It could be even higher, but Vegeta refuses to believe that. They don't know about his Kaioken, of course. But in base, it seems like he was able to beat Raditz, which definitely does interest them. The Saiyans leave for Earth, trying to see if they can convince Kakarot to join them. With his help, they'll be more than fine against Frieza. And now Goku sees that they have a year to train for the Saiyans, although he's not too concerned. But someone else arrives in the area where he fought Raditz. It's Piccolo. He's been watching this battle the entire time and didn't realize how strong Goku's grown. Ever since that alien showed up, things have been weird. Like, the fact that he saw him in the first place is weird, but he was listening in a Kame house and sees that Goku had a brother and Goku's an alien. He's just learning of this. He sensed Goku's key on the lookout before too, and he doesn't know what Goku's been up to, but he knows it involves Kami somehow. Piccolo would love to try to beat Goku here. Even his new special move probably couldn't have killed Goku. And Piccolo's more so curious, if anything. Especially with these Saiyans coming, he wants to see what Goku's been up to, what the secret to his strength is. He realized that now he has no chance at beating Goku. And as much as it annoys him, it seems the only path that he has to getting more strength is to actually follow Goku's path. He has to swallow his pride for this, but if he ever wants to beat Goku one day, this is the only way. And Goku says that's fine. He actually wanted to get some other people together to train for the Saiyans too. Besides, what type of guardian is he if he's not helping his friends on Earth? Wait, guardian? What does he mean? Oh yeah, Goku has a lot to tell Piccolo about. He's missed out on a bunch of stuff. But he'll catch him up to speed during their training. Goku then flies off back to Kame House, with Piccolo launching off trying to keep up with Goku. And this is where we'll leave off for now. What'd you guys think about this part, and what's gonna happen next time? Leave any thoughts or ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help the channel. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.